isomorphism of the domain are smart curves. So in particular, this defines the automorphism group of a map. And the stable condition, stable map means the uh, automorphism group of this map is finite. So the moduli space, so in algebraic setting, this moduli space has a structure of a probability number set. But this just means that the topological space is a compact partial topological space. And this domain number set is roughly sequence singular orbital. In this setting, that means locally it's, it's open subset of zero locus of polynomials in some CN. So it can be singular and mod by a finite group. That's the structure of the moduli space. So in general, this moduli space is uh, pretty singular. And there's, so it does not have a, virt a tangent bundle. But it has a virtual tangent bundle, which is the difference of two, ten uh, two vector bundles. Uh, so here, um, here the dimension and the rent are complex dimension and complex rent. And the virtual dimension is given by this formula. So here the integral sign denotes the pairing between homology class beta and the cohomology class, uh, the first term class of the tangent bundle. In particular, when n is zero, meaning there is no mark point, x is complex clavial threefold. So dimension is three, and c1 is zero. In this case, this virtual dimension of m bar g0 x beta is zero for any genus g and any curve class beta. OK, so in particular, so our simplex threefold is such a compact clavial threefold. So yeah, so in this case, the, this uh, second homology class is just like rank one, so we just write D instead of D times this uh, projective line class. Then to undefine the group of uh, the genus G to GD group of Witten invariant of the twin peaks to be this. So this integral sign is a pairing of um, homology class, uh, this, so this virtual fundamental class is a degree zero homology class with rational coefficient. So one is a degree zero cohomology class. The pairing is a rational number. Suppose that this, so we know that the expected dimension of this moduli space is zero. Suppose that it is actually a compact, complex, smooth manifold of dimension zero. Then it consists of finally many points, then this number should just be number of points. So in general, this moduli space um, is singular, and this should be viewed as the virtual number of points of this moduli space of expected dimension zero. Uh, we get fractional numbers because if you have a map whose automorphism group is of order two, we count it as having map instead of a map. So that's how we get rational numbers. And actually, so this fundamental class has been constructed by um, many mathematicians. And actually, they have constructed this virtual fundamental class in much more general setting when x is a general uh, projective manifold, or even more uh, generally compact almost Taylor manifold. And in general, this virtual fundamental class has the expected degree of the fundamental class. OK, so now the next thing is, uh, so for this twin peak, so for each genus, each degree, we get a rational number. So next thing is, like, we will form some generating function when we think we think the genus and sum over degree. So actually, because of the stability condition, so when degree is zero, genus is zero or one, this space is empty because there's no uh, degree zero stable map of genus zero or one. 
Okay, so when she does she explain her explain her what it's told to do. So this M D D I just defines a speed of previous slide. And this M C zero can be evaluated. It's just this. So here this B two G are just Bernoulli numbers defined by this equation. And for G S zero or one, um, yeah, so actually one should think like this this part, this if we plot this bar, it is a power series in exponential capital G. And like this should be lo yeah, seems like there's some logarithm singularity for G is zero and one. But we know what they are. So yeah, so our goal is want to like evaluate this like F G generating function of genus G zero mostly can be there. So in nineteen ninety one Kundalas Del Osa, Green and Parker derived the number of little M D of rational curves in acoustic free for of any degree C from neurosymmetry. And actually this comes first. So th their prediction motivated the development of Gromov-Witten theory. So they, when they predict this little md, which are integers, so Gromov-Witten invariants defined in previous slides were, were not defined yet. So this prediction actually motivated the development of Gromov-Witten theory. But after Gromov-Witten invariants are defined, one can formulate their conjecture in terms of this F zero. And so to stay there in numerical prediction, we introduce some IKT. So here, yeah, so the right so look at the right hand side. So because so for the so this is a power series in in H, but this H the fifth power is zero. So when you expand this, you just get of uh, one edge up to edge to the fourth power. And yeah, you collect the coefficient on the left hand side. For example, the I Z I zero P is obtained by stretching H to zero on the right hand side. Yeah, and then and so on. So these are very explosive hypergeometric theories. Yeah, I actually if you view it you this should be viewed as a power series in C uh, exponential little c, and it's easy to see that it has certain radius of convergence. So now these are just explicitly defined uh, power series, and let's say one p be the um, ratio of i one and i zero. Yeah, since so from here you see that this p plus the power series of exponential p. And the prediction of Contalus can be stated as the following. So F zero P, the generating function of genus zero from of written invariance of acoustic free fold is equal to this after this change of variable. So this yeah, so this genus zero of zero formula was proved independently by Leon Liu Yao and Stephen Tao in nineteen ninety. So maybe um, so some I some ingredient of the proof. So this um, so the modulus J so stable map to the acoustic free fold it has vertical dimension zero but it's singular. But since the acoustic free fold uh, Yeah, it's a projective semantical P4, so of course it's just a moduli of the moduli space of stable map to P4. But this moduli space of stable map to P4 is actually uh, has only orbital singularity. So it's a compact complex orbital of dimension 2z plus 1. And there's a vector bundle <coughs> whose fiber over um, a modular point is given by uh, 
the space of holomorphic structures of the pullback of O5, which is, uh, yeah, so this vector bump is uh, curly E, zero V, this a complex vector bundle of rank 5G plus 1. So, and indeed, this Quincy polynomial <coughs> defines a section of this vector bundle such that the zero locus is exactly the moduli space of stable maps to the Q group. So, um, so actually, the virtual fundamental class in this case can be understood more explicitly in more classical things. It assumes all the folds, so this it has a fundamental class. It's just this will be with rational coefficient because of the orbital structure. And we know what this means. This is also like this um, curly E is, is also an orbital holomorphic vector bundle. So yeah, so you take this cap product, it, you get a degree zero homotic <coughs> class with rational coefficient. And this, this, this virtual thing is exactly this. So therefore, you can rewrite M0D defined in terms of this as this, right? So this is actually maybe concept proposed things before the virtual thing was defined. And then this integral can be actually computed by a PLB localization formula because there, there is a chorus action on P4 and the chorus action can be lifted to this, yeah, this cohomology group, and therefore this uh, vector bundle, and this be becomes an equivariant Euler class. So, and then, uh, yeah, so the proof, you use this, like, localization is a very important ingredient in the proof. So, so the next thing is like Venus one. So it's like two years later, Bersetsky, Tchaikovsky, Oguri, and Vava made the following prediction on Venus one through Mopulkin invariant. So the general so so we have already defined what I zero and J one are. And then you do this change of variables, you <coughs> get the generating function of Venus one through Mopulkin invariant of the Quincy table. Yeah, I think they go like beyond Venus 1, but this is their prediction on Venus 1. And this was proved much later. You see, this was predicted in 93, but it was finally completely proved by Alexei Singer in 2007, which is almost 10 years after the Venus 0, 0 formula was proved. And it's difficult because the picture like that, you cannot write the, so because in this case, this when Sina is greater than zero, if you take this H zero, it is no longer a vector bundle because this H one is not necessarily zero. So both of these forms are <coughs> cheap. And then you cannot write your uh, M C zero, the stable map to the quintic as a zero locus of section of a vector bundle. So that's the approach to like Venus zero does not work here. So to prove the BCOV conjecture, so Singer and collaborators, Finley and Vasil, they develop a theory of reduced Venus one from of Wilkin invariance of Q. So roughly speaking, the idea is the following. So the, there's a main component which you can think of the closure of the map where the domain is smooth. So you, the, this reduced <coughs> invariant should be viewed as a contribution from this main component to the Venus one from of Wilkin invariant. And then Vasil Zinger and later so constructed a desingularization of this main component. So the main component is singular, and this desingularization has only like orbital singularity. 
And so this reduced invariant is defined by this. And then you see that the um, torus action on C4 induces torus action on this main component. And torus action can be lifted to this desingularization. And this is a vector bundle whose rank is equal to the dimension of this uh, complex orbital phi C. So this reduced invariant can be computed like in a similar way as the in the genus real case. It's, this case is more complicated, but and so the right hand side can be computed by a PR bar localization formula. And Lee and Zinger also proved that uh, so the ordinary Gromov written invariant is equal to the reduced genus one Gromov written invariant of degree D plus one over so the genus zero Gromov written invariant of degree D and the, like after the so combined with the genus zero formula uh, Alexi Zinger managed to prove the BCOV conjectural formula for genus one. Yeah, so this was first proved using analytic method and later Fai Lang Zhang and Zhongli gave an algebra geometric proof of this identity. Okay, so that's genus one. So how about, so genus be greater or equal to two. So in, in 2004, so, so the uh, two very important proof of com counting curves or computing from of written invariants are localization, so as we have seen, and degeneration. So the idea, idea of the degeneration is if, if you have, say you have a completed string fold, you can degenerate it into two pieces and say this is degree two and degree three and intersect transversally along a smooth divisor and say this is y1, y2 and so the Gromov written invariant this works in more general setting but idea of this be, yeah, if the Gromov written invariance of Q can be written in terms of the relative Gromov written invariance of the pair Y1B and Y2B. So then the idea is they just keep on degenerate. So first you can degenerate it into degree two or three, and degree two or three can be continue to degenerate to like when the degree is low enough, then this can be evaluated. So after yeah, several degenerations, one can reduce MGD in previous known Gromov written invariant. Yeah, like P3 and several surfaces and curves. And so this gives you some algorithm. So if you one wants to know any like given GD, then in finite time this can be computed, but the finite time is very long. So <laughs> yeah, so um, so that but at least the theoretically it can be evaluated. So how about the so in 2006 Huang Quan? So so this they they extended. The mirror conjecture, the BCOV mirror conjecture for I think low genus to genus up to degree 51. And the key uh, ingredient in their derivation is the work of Yamaguchi Yao. So basically saying that FC can be written as like polynomially by graduated. Um, so but this conjecture, so this Closed formula for even for F2 is has not been verified mathematically yet. Okay, so that's the status. So um so let's see. Um so this 
um, we are so full convenience, which is, we are like this three parts of five to know this uh, two, uh, particular full community of unity. And then, so <coughs> the new, so the, so the new community, by this um, degree five quintic polynomial, but it is in C4 tensor by a finite group instead of C4. Uh, so it's given by this ex explicit one parameter family. So this G is, so A1 to A5 are fixed roots of unity, but their product is one. So if we int this, group, then this reaction of this group on C4 preserves this uh, polynomial. So it preserves this quintic root quotient by the action of G. But we mod out the diagonal since it acts severally on C4. So this is a Bering group of order 125. So this uh, We see that this takes zero moduli, it's a complex moduli. And this Pasai can this complex moduli is one dimensional and this this Pasai is lo local coordinate. So picture looks like this. When Pasai is equal to zero, then actually we get so before it goes in by G smooth, but after it goes in by this G, we get the orbital form. And then, uh, so here is V is equal to zero. So V is, yeah, so these are the two stars and this is, this is the weighted projective space. So this has the orbital form. This point is like a, a point marked by G star. So this is a complex module. So this is um so when Poseidon is infinity, this is the maximal unipotent monogram root point. We have normal crossing singularity. It degenerates to a union of five hyperplanes. And then, um, so here there, it has some isolated ordinary double point singularity. Okay, so then, um, so, so what happens is, so near here, so if we do like, so here on, on the B model, there are like B model FG shell. And by mirror symmetry, this is zero to the, the mm, most recent invariant of the free group. And this is zero to the so-called W invariant of the quintic polynomial W5. Yeah, so, so on B model, we have this global moduli and global universal family of uh, the mirror quintic. But on the A model, we only know like expansion near the maximum unipotent monogram point and the orbital point. So is this possible? 
plausible to conclude this picture in the middle. Uh, so in order to do that, actually, so my, my so this uh, Hua Liang Xiang and Li, so they establish, they say, I will say what this means mathematically later, but they say that this is actually equivalent to the landau Ginsburg model of the total space of canonical line bundle of P4, so it's a non-compact polabial bifold, W. So here, W on the fiber. And this is um, Hua Liangxiang and Jin Li and Wei Jin Li. They show that this is equal to Wendell Ginsburg model of so W5 is equal to this, but we can also view this as D star epsilon D5 by this. So this quotient is equal to this quotient. And then you can. Yeah, so if under this isomorphism, you see these two theories are closer to each other. So let me make it more precise. So, um, Yeah, so this is near, yeah, so this is just repeating what I said over there. And this SJRW, yeah, th there's a definition in terms of counting. So this is also defined by like some virtual plot on some moduli spaces. In this, uh, in this theory, the moduli space is a solution of the weakened equation, but actually, like we will actually use the algebraic definition over here. <coughs> so the A model is a Taylor moduli. So first we want to identify that Taylor model instead of doing here, we have Taylor moduli here. So we consider the C star action on P6, which coordinate X1 to X5 and P. So the weight is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 to P minus 5. Uh, 11111 minus 5. And this action restricted to a Hamiltonian U1 action on P6 with this, sorry, this should be C6, with the standard symplectic form. And I didn't divide by 2, so the moment map is given by this. So now you can, the, yeah, if you take the print image of regular value and do the symplectic reduction and you get a symplectic form, which is a Taylor form. So you see when A is greater than zero, um, then, so then the, in the print image X1 to X5 cannot be only zero. So you, as a complex quotient, is exactly the total space of canonical line bundle of P4. And a is proportional to the symplectic area of a projective line in the base P4. But as A goes to zero, then this P4 shrinks to zero. And you see when A is less than zero, then P can never be zero. So you get exactly C5 mod mu5. So mu5 is isomorphic to this, uh, the group of this group is of unity. So that's the, so A is the uh, Taylor parameter, so real variable. And you see that the superpotential, like under this action, this superpotential is invariant under this action. So it extends to this quotient. So now the next thing I want to uh, explain is what's the precise mathematical meaning of this this equality. Um, so
So uh, for a long time in Chile, developed this stable mass of PC, also it's n bar g of P for mm -hmm. dt. So it's um, so you it's u c. Uh, so where so this is your stable mass. So together with additional row, which is a section of this line bundle. And this mod, so there are lots of equivalence relations. So, but the first, um, yeah, so this is just, uh, yeah, this is just um, a stable mass together with a so called P field, which, which is a section of this line bundle. But a map of this synthetic field, this is also in P4, right? So map, so so you can be written with yeah. So map to P four is just given by five sections of full back of O one. Yeah. So we can rewrite it. As this, so the condition that the map is to be V becomes like this line bundle has to be V. And then we have some condition because to in order to define a map to P4, so this section as a section on this vector bundle can be nowhere zero. And this is the stability condition. And then um so they have a, so this, so you see like in the higher genus case, we cannot write this stable map to Q, uh, to the quintage as a zero locus of a section of vector bundle over this moduli, over moduli space of stable map to P4. But this, but here th this W actually defines, so, so here, this, over this, there is a obstruction sheet. This fiber at the particular module point is given by this. Actually, you see this, this at a point, this two vector spaces only depends on this stable mass. Okay, so this is like the obstruction to the, yeah, to the map to a P4. And then um, this part is actually um, so this part is actually here to this. But then this is um, so this L is. due to the, in genus zero, this is due to the bundle we described before. So now instead of section, so this superpotential defines something called a co-section. So a section of a vector bundle uh, defines a bundle map from this trivial bundle to this bundle. So the co-section is a map, bundle map from the vector bundle to the trivial bundle. And then, this cosection has its, yeah, this is highly technical, but this superpotential W, one is this superpotential to define a cosection. And then Julie and Kim developed this technique of cosection localized virtual cycle. So know that because of this row, so when genus is greater than, greater than zero, you can forget the row, there's a map to M. Yeah, 
Yeah, so when G naught is greater than zero, this module S base with C field is non-compact. But this conception has compact degenerate to locus. Actually, the degenerate to locus is, is exactly the module S base of zero map to the queen group. And Huayang Zhang and Jing Li show that they can use the procession localized virtual cycle to define, uh, yeah, use this conception to define a localized virtual cycle, which is actually a homology class in the degenerate locus. In this case, it's exactly modulized space of stable map to the queen group. And moreover, they also show that this, this virtual cycle and this virtual cycle differ by this. So this is just the e index of the whole bunch of O5. In particular, in the genus zero case, this procession localized cycle is like this. Cap plug out with the Euler class of this dual vector bundle. So then we, and this vector bundle has rank 5e plus 1. So yeah, so now I have like explained the mathematical meaning of this. So next is this. So we will just explain this. So this is, um, yeah, so I'll just give you a rough idea because like we care more about the Gromov written invariant. So this I will just give you a rough idea what are the counting in this theory. So first we introduce, so let gamma be gamma one to gamma L. Well, each gamma I is a fifth root of unity, which is not one. So then the module S base of G in the G gamma Marcy um, thing curve. So we, And this line bundle is actually an Orbi line bundle. So then this, this is point mark V5, and this Orbi line bundle L over the Orbi curve B has mon monogramming gamma J around the orbital point Vj. And then, so this is the domain, and then this line bundle satisfies this is the fifth root of unity of this line bundle. This is the dualizing sheet, which is by this point. Um, yeah, so actually, so this, so if you forget, you can, so here you have G, G, L. forget the line bundle and this is a finite map because there are uh, finite fifth roots of unity of this fifth line bundle. Okay, so that's called the modulized space of uh, five spin curve. And then, so uh, then Huai Liang Chang, Jing Li and Wei Jing Li develop, oh sorry, this should be a Z here. So there is uh, this is a uh, five spin curve with field. So it's like you get this is a five spin curve of genus G with uh, marked by this gamma, and then together with five sections of this bundle L line bundle L, and this row is a nowhere no nowhere zero section of this. So basically this row just gives you an isomorphism. Right, so there is a G 
can forget from that, from this part, to this marginalized space by forgetting the uh, section. And again, this is this is compact because this is just marginalized space of compact stable curves. This is com com compact complex orbital of dimension three g minus three plus l, and this is like finite map, and this is also compact. But this this is not compact because of this section. But again, they use this superpotential to define a conception on some obstruction obstruction sheet over this non-compact modelized space to degenerate to locus with exactly when all the phi i's are zero. So it's compact. And then they uh, use this to construct virtual localized, localized virtual cycles, which are rational homology classes on this modulized space of five string curves. Oh, and yeah, so the, I won't tell you the original general, uh, like definition here, but then you can consider a special case where you put like k elements in gamma and all the monogamy are equal to this. So in this case, this has virtual, this virtual class has zero degree. And actually, this is a degree zero class and it is actually zero unless uh, two three minus two plus k is equal to five. So then in this case, we define, so again, this integral sign is a pairing of homology class and cohomology class of degree zero, and one gets a rational number. These are primitive genus C, as they are doubly invariant. So previously, we have defined um, Fg here, and similarly, one can use this C type GK, so this is defined by normal station invariant of genus C degree D. So similarly, one can uh, so here we have more global. This is from the B model, and here this is like defined locally in neighborhood of genus equal to zero with certain radius of convergence. And here, one can use this SJRW invariant to define this. So if we believe neural symmetry, then these two should be related by some transformation analytic continuation. And, and it's very hard to see it from the original definition, but with this new de like identification, we seem to be, yeah, we seem to have some hope to relate these two theories. Um, so yeah, okay, so we, Following, so we want to relate, find a master space which contains these two different symplectic like quotients. So we consider the C star epsilon C6 times C1. So the epsilon of C6 is a C4, and the epsilon of C1 is given by this. So the master space, yeah, I mean, instead of looking at this equation, let's just look at the picture. But this is, okay, so this will be something, the quotient will be <coughs> six-dimensional. But uh, I can only draw three-dimensional. So I will have, so this is the picture for this master space. So this is C, this is Yeah, this looks more like C2 and K C1. And then this is right, and this is so
So in terms of this equation, this is u1 is equal to 0. So the whole thing is a is a polish six-fold. And this divisor is kb4. This divisor is uh, c5 mod u5. And only, so there is a point here. So this point is given by 0, 0, 0. One, one, because we mod by the two star action. So we have a point here. So this is given by u2 equal to 0. So this point is, this point is given by Yeah, that, that's the peak here. So now we form this, and now we can. So now this is the equivalent class. I mean, sorry, this should be M in the master space. And there is a C star action. So this is a picture of the master space. So there is a C star action in this direction. So it will act like this. It will fix this. O and this. So that's the peak here. So we have this master space and the C star action whose fixed locus is roughly this KB4 and C5 mod U5 and a point. Okay, so then what, um, yeah, so finally I started to make some contribution with Chen Li and Li. So it's natural. We should just de develop a Randall, the theory. This is Randall Ginsburg model. But the target is the master space. And you can use the same superpotential. It's just the superpotential only <coughs> doesn't depend on uh, U1 and U2. So we develop this theory. We call it mixed spin C field because there are like C field here and spin curve here. Okay, and so it's a mathematical theory of Landau Ginsberg model, the master space with this super potential. And yeah, so this is complicated, but it's just we need to. So um, we, we should. Um, yeah, so again, so now because. So now we, we have. Um, a curve with some orbital uh, in a sphere with some orbital point and this two line bundles with um, yeah they are orbital line bundles so their degree can be fractional and we can specify two degrees C zero and D infinity C zero is the degree of L tensor M and D infinity is the degree of M. And then you should think this, yeah, so then this C is, this C will correspond to the coordinate x1 to x5 on the master space, and rho corresponds to the C field, and mu1, mu2 corresponds, gives you a, so th this will give you a map to C1. That's the rough idea. And then, so, but the, the point is, this moduli space is non compact but one can use this super potential to define a cosection on this, like, moduli space or field with value in this um, master space. And the degeneracy locus is virtually compact, so one can use the cosection work like virtual cycle. Yeah. So we get this virtual cycle, and we can use this to define MST invariance. So now what we do is this MST, so so this this C star action so this C star action um, yeah, actually the C star action if you like the action on this moduli space is just multiplying mu1 
by which show you one by the two star action, and then you after when you look at a fixed role touch, then you realize that the fixed role touch are just a product of moduli space of stable maps to uh, the prefix and the moduli space of five string curves, and also moduli space of maps from a curve to a point. So schematically, we have developed a mathematical theory of this little visual model, and we have this point action. And this equivalent theory reduced to the random visual model pit, which is the geomorphism theory of the spring pit and geomorphism theory of the point, which is completely known, and SDRW theory. Um, so, and then, so when the virtual dimension of certain modulized space, you choose some gamma G0 and G infinity, suppose that this respective dimension is positive, then you integrate one, you will get zero. And then you can compute this zero by localization. You get a polynomial relation among geomorphism lens of the spring peak and SJRW invariant of the uh, Fermat spring peak polynomial. Yeah, actually you see, you can get a lot more vanishing because you only need to integrate any class whose degree is less than this degree. You get vanishing, but we have only use this. Actually, we have used much less. So first, if we consider a case where all the, ga the gamma is just empty, uh, yeah, and g infinity is zero, then the relation determining n uh, degree, so suppose there's a recursive relation to determine g minus g degree g, Pink polynomial. So suppose pre, so uh, for most we can invariant. Suppose that you know the um, SJRW invariant for a uh, genus less than G and K up to this, and you know the your most we can invariant for genus G prime less than G and degree G prime less than G, and Suppose that you also know the genus G degree G prime less than G, then you can compute uh, N degree. So this algorithm, it doesn't completely determine the all the geomorphism invariant, but um, suppose that you know this SJR, so for a simplified case, if you know all the SJRW invariant, we want to know if the SJRW invariant can completely determine the geomorphism invariant as expected. The answer is no, but then suppose that we only already know all the SJRW invariant up to genus G. And we also suppose that we know We also know the geomorphism invariant for G prime less than G. So then, if you, so then, so, so to determine F G, we just need to determine N G one up to N G. Yeah, this, and this is like this is this this is a number of unknowns that we need to compute by other methods. Then this algorithm will determine all the rest. And this G minus one is uh, the number of unknowns using this homomorphic anomaly equation plus this so-called gap condition. So there's a, another, we can also consider the case gamma is empty, no, G zero is zero. Then there is a, so then this algorithm will only involve the SJRW invariant itself. So again, for this genus, we need to know 
by certain number, and this person will be turning the red. Uh, okay, so this, but you see, like, we need to, there are a lot more relations that we need to explore, and hopefully we can get, like, stronger algorithm after we uh, explore this density.